Today we're going to talk about transfusion reactions, and this is the first of two videos on the prevention, diagnosis, and emergency management of transfusion reactions in children. Our first video, we'll talk about the immune-based hemolytic reactions, and our second video, we'll talk about non-immune um, reactions. Our first topic is the acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is a very serious, life, potentially life-threatening uh, complication of transfusion. Fortunately, easily prevented by good clerical management. Approximately 80 to 85 percent of all life-threatening acute hemoly hemolytic transfusion reactions are due to simple clerical error. And thus, these can be prevented, largely, by simply being very, very careful and diligent about your uh, patient's ID banding and the unit ID and the orders, uh, making sure that all these things match properly before giving the unit. Immunologically, these are frequently due to RH epitopes or JK or ABO incompatibility. Um, and the classic triad is fever, blank pain, hemoglobinuria. Other symptoms that can occur are chest pain, shortness of breath, impending sense of doom. Um, fever and chills though, are frequently the only symptoms you'll see. In a, a surgical setting uh, where this may happen in a, a trauma or a large volume transfusion scenario, um, hypotension and DIC may be your only presenting symptoms. Okay. The treatment of this is to stop the transfusion at once. This is going to be a recurring theme and it's in red for a good reason. One of the common responses to any transfusion reaction is to stop. Stop the transfusion, send the unit, and freshly drawn type and cross match specimen, a urine specimen, and the transfusion reaction forms to the blood bank for analysis. Then supportive therapy airway breathing circulation measures, fluids to flush the hemoglobin from the kidneys and to support blood pressure. Usually this is done at one and a half to two times maintenance with normal saline. It's important to avoid Ringer's lactate because of the calcium, which may cause inappropriate clotting of the remaining blood in the tubing. And it's important to avoid dextrose-based solutions such as D5 and water or D5 and a quarter, um, as the dextrose may affect hemolysis as well. Um, Patients may actually need pharmaceutical support of blood pressure and renal function, and thus when these reactions occur, it's always best to get the PICU people notified, even if the patient is stable, simply so they know what's going on in case things go south later on. A delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction is something a little bit more different and may well not be at a nighttime emergency, but may occur um, from previous transfusion. Generally, these are transfusion reactions which occur several days to weeks later and are related to a previously unknown uh, antibody, which had an anamnestic response in, res in uh, response to the transfused blood, and then there was a delayed hemolysis uh, related to that new antibody. These are commonly RH group again, or KID antibodies. Um, the symptoms really are largely confined to back pain or jaundice. Um, a dropping hemoglobin is regularly seen in the labs. And newly, antibody screen, newly positive antibody screen is also seen. On a peripheral blood smear, spherocytes are the common finding. The treatment is to identify the antibody and to provide supportive therapy for the uh, uh, patient if needed. Importantly, it's, it's very important to be um, compulsive about this. A lot of times you'll send specimens to the blood bank and the blood bank won't understand what you're working for. And if that's the case, it's time to go to the pathologist running the blood bank and tell them what you're concerned about because this reaction really is important to do analysis on and to have a clear sense of what that antibody is aimed at so that future transfusions aren't complicated by that. 
The next is an anaphylactic reaction. These are commonly seen in children or adults who are IgA deficient. There are populations around the world who are also deficient in haptoglobin and who may have reactions to haptoglobin. Um, these are not particularly common other than that, but may occur to anaphylaxis to other plasma-based proteins. And again, the approach to this is simple, stopping a transfusion, supporting vital functions, fluids to support BP if needed, epinephrine, antihistamines, and um, further blood bank consultation during work hours. Trolley is our most common lethal transfusion reaction now that we've eliminated most of the uh, uh, auto or autoimmune hemolytic anemia, uh, mostly acute hemolytic transfusion reactions. Um, Transfusion-borne anti-HLA antibodies destroy native granulocytes. This results in cytokines and interleukins being released into the lung, where this usually occurs, and results in damage to the surrounding lung tissue, which results in an ARDS-type picture um, manifested by dyspnea, tachypnea, tachycardia, um, hypotension, and fever. Um, the treatment is supportive. Um, patients will sometimes require mechanical ventilation in order to maintain oxygenation because of the ARDS picture, and thus a pulmonary and an intensive care unit consult are uh, mandatory in this environment. Um, this generally will occur within about six hours after a transfusion, and uh, as we'll talk about in uh, volume two, uh, can be frequently confused with volume overload. Um, and important distinctions need to be made because volume overload is obviously treated much differently.